What's going on guys? Welcome back. So today what we're going to take a look at <clears throat> is how to deploy a Python application on a Microsoft Azure virtual machine. So what we have in front of us here is a basic, basic Python Flask application. And what this is here is, uh, we'll review it very quickly. We're basically importing from Flask. We're importing the Flask class. Then we're going to instantiating that class. That class. All right, and then we're saying we're defining a route, and that's just the index route. We're creating a uh, function that returns the text "Hello World," and we're great. We're going ahead and we're running our web application. So this is a pretty standard Flask, Flask, you know, template demo application. So now what we need to do is create a virtual machine in Azure. So let's go ahead here and navigate to portal.azure.com. If you haven't signed up for a Microsoft Azure account, go ahead and do so now. Um, that'll be where you create your virtual machine. So let's create a resource here. Let's go to well, actually, we'll go to virtual machines. If you don't, if you don't see it on the main pane here, and we can look along the left side, we see it on the left side right here. We'll click virtual machines. So let's click add. And what we're going to do is give it a we're creating a resource group. So and again in 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 Azure everything is structured hierarchically. So if you consider for a fact that we have a resource group and the resource group contains some items and those items contain some other items and those might have some properties, then we get that hierarchical structure. And that's what we need here. So we say YT demo. Uh, well, that's already created. Group. So we're just gonna call it YT demo group for our resource group for our, our virtual machine name. We're gonna call it uh, YT demo. Uh, YT demo. VM um, for region East US is fine. Keep in mind that Azure has data centers all over the world and that they're organized by regions. And these regions are again kind of uh, all, again are all over the world. And these regions are where you can uh, host your code when you or what data center you can use. So in our case, we're using the East US data center. Now we have availability options. We don't need any infrastructure redundancy. For our image, we're using the Ubuntu Server 18.04 uh, LTS image. Uh, we don't need any spot instances. Um, for size, we're using a standard production image, or not image, sorry, uh, standard production size. And we would keep in mind with the size. So there are a variety of different processes, right? And they can be I.O. bound, uh, compute bound, memory bound, uh, disk bound. Uh, when I say memory, I mean RAM or, uh, you know, random access memory. So when you have all these different tasks or these processes, they are bound by these different things. What that means is that they 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 can only scale if those specific uh, those specific utilities scale as well. For example, if I'm running something that requires a lot of re requires a lot of CPU calculations, then if, unless I increase my amount the amount of compute I have or parallelize a lot of the processes, then I'm going to be I'm going to I'm only going to be able to compute a certain amount of things over the course of time. All right, so now for uh, for authentication, uh, we're just going to put John G. Fisher. You can put whatever you want. Um, and for my for my password, I'm putting John G. Fisher one exclamation point. All right, and now we've got inbound port rules. So let's go ahead and allow um, SSH and we're going to allow HTTPS and HTTP as well. Now for disks, these are the uh, the hard drive of your our computer and for running our for running our operating system. In our case, we have three different options. We have a standard hard drive, we have a standard solid state, and a premium solid state. Now the fastest option to choose is the premium solid state, and we're going to go with that. That's what you see. Solid state D SSD stands for solid state drive. Now we have an encryption type. Uh, we're going to use encryption at rest with a platform managed key. That means Azure is going to take care of the key in in terms of managing the encryption and decryption um, of of our assets with the key. All right, and that's when this is encrypting our data at rest. Um, now for our networking here, we're not going to attach any extra disks. We're pretty we're solely going to use the OS disk. So now we have some networking considerations to make. Uh, for our virtual network, it's going to create a new one. It's also going to create a new subnet, and it's also going to create a new public IP. So these things are all going to be provisioned automatically for us and then assigned to our virtual machine. Now we have a security group. Uh, it's going to be a basic security group, and I would say public inbound ports. We want to allow selected ports. We have our selected ports right here, 80, 443, and 22. We're also going to allow 5,000 because that's the one that our app server is going to be running on. Now our accelerated networking is going to be off and load balancing is going to be off as well. Now for management here, 
We don't need boot diagnostics, so we don't need any diagnostics when the virtual machine starts up. And we don't need any guest diagnostics either. Um, a system assigned managed identity we do not need. Enabling auto shutdown. This is something you might want to do if you're not going to shut down the VM directly after this uh, session. So essentially, if you, uh, if you if you enable it to run, it's going to potentially cost you more. If you enable auto shutdown, it'll automatically shut down that VM um, at a certain time. And now we have backup here, so we can enable backup if we want as well, which you do not want to do. So next we have advanced. If we want to install any extensions, what we can do is say we want to manage a, a farm of, of servers and we're using something like Chef or Puppet, which are basically configuration management tools, which basically means any kind of um, updates or package configuration that we want to update or maintain or change, we use these tools for, okay? And what they do is you install a small program called an agent on your ser on a server A, and then on server B, you can control all the servers that have, agent, have the agent installed. So you might have um, agent you might have server A, C, and D with agents installed, and you're controlling them all from server B, right? To make it more concise, maybe you have server A for controlling your control tower, and then B, C, and D have agents on them, and you can go ahead and control all the updates simultaneously for all those agents with that extension. But we're not going to be using that today. Uh, Cloud init is, is, is used for basically running a few commands. Say I wanted to run like sudo, you know, apt, apt install x, uh, package name here, right? package name right so if we wanted to do something like that we could do that and we've, we've, as many times as we wanted um, and then for host uh, we don't need any kind of host group or proximity placement group VM generation we're going to use gen 1 so we can use our disk encryption which again is not necessary but it's good practice and again uh, so let's go ahead and uh, click through tags. You could you create some tags. That's a good practice. Uh, say you have a certain department that this billing or that this this compute or storage resource belongs to, then you might assign it to a certain department. You might have a certain uh, environment that it belongs to. Say production environment, uh, QA, UAT, something like that. You might assign it to a specific environment. Um, there's a variety of things you might do. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. And once this is created, what we're going to go ahead and do is actually create a, uh, we're going to open up port 5000 on the uh, virtual machine NSG. So what that is, is a network security group. So again, on your network, consider just like a, a big a network is just a big graph, right? So if I just drop a lot of points on a piece of paper and I connect all those points with lines, then I have a graph, right? And this graph is is kind of the, the structure that, that this takes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so once this is created here, once this is created, we're going to go ahead and deploy our Python app, and we're going to deploy it with a command called SCP. So I'll show you guys what that command is now. So this is essentially what it is here. So SCP is a command line utility that allows you to securely copy files and directories between different locations. So I can either copy a whole lot of files or just a few files. Now with SCP, I can copy, a, again, a file or a directory. And basically what this is, is again a way to transfer files between my my machine, excuse me, my machine and a remote machine. So let's go ahead and get this going here. Uh, let's check out our, our, our process here. So our deployment is complete. Let's go ahead and go to this resource. What we're going to do is grab this public IP address that you see in the, t in the top right here. And we're going to copy that down. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and secure shell into that. So we're going to say SSH John G. Fisher, or what you put your admin username, you know, at that IP address. And then we're going to go ahead and type yes. And then we're going to type the password. So in my case, John G. Fisher one exclamation point or whatever you guys put in your case. And then we're going to be authenticated with our virtual machine, which is now up and running. So now that we have our virtual machine up and running, uh, we can confirm that it's good to go. Let's go ahead and run this SCP command. So what we can do is say SCP main.py, and then we can say uh, John G. Fisher uh, at uh, that IP address, colon, tilde. Then we go ahead and press that, and... And then you enter your password again, and then boom, it shows a little indicator that it copied the pass that it copied the file with the percentage on the right there and how long and how what the transfer speeds were. So now let's go ahead and secure shell back into that machine. And now we're back in the machine. So now we can go ahead and, and actually run this application. So when now when we first deploy this machine, we now need to install Python. We need to keep that in mind. So if we see, we can check what version of Python we have with Python dash dash version. Oops. We see we have Python 2.1.7. Let's see if we have Python 3. And we do. So we have Python 3. And now let's go ahead and say um, pip. Let's see. 
of what Python and which pip we have. No, so no uh, pip for 2.7, I don't believe. Let's see. Yeah, so we can say sudo apt install python3 pip. Oh, we need to add the repository. Okay, so now we've got this here. Uh, oh, we can run the app update, sudo app update. That's what it is. So a repository, by the way, when you're working in Linux, um, if you have, when you're trying to download packages, there's certain locations that you try to, that the package manager will try to look for packages when you try to download them. And if it can't find them in certain locations, it'll look in others, right? So uh, essentially there's a generic location that's pre-specified when you first spin up your VM and that's, that's kind of baked into the operating system. And then there are other repository, package repositories that you can add. And then you can also download packages from those feeds. Now, sometimes you don't always have those that, that available to you but uh, when you do that's 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 kind of how Linux package manager is extended or that's how uh, not Linux that's a little too generic that's how apt is extended there's a different package manager per one so now we can install this pip here now once we have pip installed we can go ahead and install flask and then we can run this application all right, so here we go. So now let's go ahead and install Flask. Um, we're going to run pip install Flask, and then after that, we can run this application, and then we're going to use a trick to run it in the background and prevent the terminal from killing the process when we exit the terminal uh, with, a, with a command called no hub. So once this is complete here, Taking a little while. Now keep in mind there are a, lot, a variety of ways to deploy a Python application depending on the type of application. For Flask in particular, um, it uses it uses um, an HTTP server. Um, in this case, we're using a development server, but there's ways to use uh, things like, uh, you can use things like uh, Gunicorn and UWSGI as well um, for doing these kinds of things. Okay, so there we go, we got these. Now we can go ahead and run this, so we can say Python, uh, or no, we'll say pip3 install Flask. Okay, now we can say Python main.py, no module from oh, Python 3, main.py. There we go, now it's running, so we can test that. We, can, we know that it's going to run. So now we can run the command uh, no hup, um, no hup main, no, no hup Python 3 main.py and ampersand. So there we go. So now what this is going to do is allow us to exit out of the terminal and the process is going to continue to run. But now what we can do is we can go back, copy that public IP address again. And now before we do anything more, let's go ahead and change our network security group. So we have our, you guys should only have one if you just signed up, but um, what we've got here is our YT, YT demo VM dash NSG. And we want to add we want to add a, a rule here for inbound security rules. We want to add a rule to allow traffic to port 5000. And so we can just name it port 5 underscore 5000. Uh, we want to change the destination port range to 5000. Everything else we can leave the same. Priority is at 350. And we've got two rules above it. Um, at or no three at 340, 320, and 300, and three below it at 65,000 and, and more. Okay, so now that should allow that kind of traffic. So now we can go back to our virtual machines. Again, we have our YT demo VM. We get that IP address, paste it in, and go to port 5000. And it could not be reached. So 
So the application is running. This can't be reached, however, at port 5000. So let's see what we got here. So we have our public IP address. We go to this IP address at port 5000. It should be running. Hmm. So, oh, I know. So what we need to do is go ahead and adjust the host and a port. So let's do Vim and go ahead and adjust main.py. If you want, you can go ahead and adjust this in VS Code and then SCP it back over again with the SCP file name, uh, username, at IP address uh, command. So we can say app.run, and we're going to say host equals 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and port equals 5000. All right. So now we can now we can go ahead and say PSAUX pipe grep Python. Now what this is going to do is search all running processes for uh, for ones that are using Python. So now we can go ahead and we see this one down here started by me, uh, nineteen five five six. It'll probably be different on your machine, uh, and we can go ahead and kill that process. So kill nineteen five five six. And again, if you guys are using a Windows machine, the commands are going to be slightly different. You probably would have realized that by now, but the commands are going to be slightly different. And you can use something like git bash if you want to continue to use um, if you want to continue to use these Unix commands. Okay, so now we've got this. Now we can say something like uh, now we can run that no up command again. So no up python three main dot py and and now we should be able to refresh. And there we go. We get hello world. So there we go. That's how to deploy an application, a flat Python Flask application using uh, NoHup uh, onto Microsoft Azure Virtual Machine. So if you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys just got here. Uh, again, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support and I'll see you all in the next video.